Welcome back. Today I have the Sprinzel Sebring Sprite back on the dyno. I am preparing to leave for the Healy World Challenge at Road America, so I have another set of carbs on here that I want to try out, and we'll see if these run any better than the HS2s that I tried last week. Under the bonnet, I have now refitted the SUH4s. These are the carbs that this car was FIA homologated with, and these are the carbs that the works cars were running. This engine may be more of a street engine than the engine that the works cars were running. If I can get these working properly with this engine, that is a plus because these are the carbs that I would have to run in an FIA race. Typically here in the United States, you would typically just throw a Weber on this and forget about it. But if we're going European vintage racing, we have to stick to the rules. Everything is connected to the dyno just like it was before. We are collecting signals from the ignition as well as air fuel ratio. I'm just making sure everything's working okay. We're getting RPM, we're getting air fuel ratio. Here at idle, our air fuel ratio is about 11. If it stays there, that's best rich torque at wide open throttle and we'll be just fine if it stays right there. Let's make a run and see where it goes. I usually like to start my dyno runs around 2000 RPM, but if I try flooring it, the car just shakes like crazy. If we look over at our air fuel ratio, we are just completely rich. So we need to lean this out before we can even drive it. I had a feeling that we were going to find these too rich because the car easily started every time. Race cars do not normally start well when they're cold. So I'm going to take my SU adjusting wrench and I think let's go six flats leaner and just start there. This is looking a lot better. We're around 13 to 14 at idle now, which is a lot closer to stoichiometric. We would probably want to see this around 14.6 or maybe even a little leaner. But let's try this and make a run. we have some results. The red line is from the SUHS2s from last week and the blue line is from these carbs this week. You can see I did get the SUHS2s dialed in that we were not running so rich we were basically off the scale at any point. The mixture actually was very steady the entire run. Uh, this time with these H4s, you can see it was so rich, it was actually off the scale right here. That's why that's totally flat. And then it started to lean out and it kept getting leaner throughout the entire run until we ended up right there about the stoichiometric ratio. And if we look at our horsepower and torque curves, you can see because we were so rich way over here, the car was making hardly any power compared to what it was with the HS2s that were much leaner. But in the end, once the H4 started to go lean, we started to gain power over what the HS2s had. So this presents me with a problem. It looks like the needle profile is even worse on these H4s for this engine 
than the ones that I had on the HS2s. I can adjust the carburetor so that we can start at a leaner starting point, but if we progressively keep getting lean, by the time we're at 6,000 RPM, we may be into dangerously lean territory. I'm going to lean it out a little bit, see if we can come to a middle ground here, but if things keep going this way, I may actually want to switch back to the HS2s because these are profiled even worse than those were. Looks like at maximum we got to about 14, let's call it 14 and a half on our AFR. We can go all the way to 18 if we have to. So I think I'm going to try two more flats and we'll run this again and see where we're at. I leaned out the carbs by two flats and right now we're sitting at the 18 to 19 range. We could go a little leaner as long as it's only at idle. We probably only have one or two more flats that we can use if we need to go leaner. Let's run it and see what happens. This last run was the green run. We're doing a little better. We're making a lot more power than we did last time. We're starting to catch up to the HS2s. We're still running very rich at the beginning. And at the end, we did not lean out as much as I thought we would. So let's go much leaner and run this again. I think we're gaining some ground here and we're also making the most amount of power that we have so far. I've leaned it out a bunch more, but that brought the RPM down to a point where it's not running. So I will have to adjust the idle up a little bit. I'll get it running and then come back and adjust this again. I closed out a few of the previous runs because it was getting pretty cluttered here. The red line is the last run with the SUHS2s and the orange line is the last run that I just made. You can see on our air fuel ratio we are catching up about to where we were with the HS2s. We are running leaner up top. This is all okay. We're still within a good range but once I hopped out of the car and it was warmed up, I did have to adjust some things on the car because it was knocking at idle because we're so lean now at idle. So I'm tempted to leave things the way they are right now. We will need a needle change if we want to make this any better down here. We're not, we're just losing a little bit between 2000 and 2500 RPM. I shouldn't really be there on the racetrack and we're at the same or better as we were with the HS2. So I think we've met that middle ground mark where these are now better 
than what I was working with last week, and everything should be far better than it was when I was last on track. I should mention, even though these two lines on air-fuel ratio are close to each other, the results are completely different. On the SUHS2s, I could not lean these carbs out any more than they are, so it is what it is. But on these H4s, we're running extremely lean at idle, and then while driving, we are extremely rich. And I think that's a good indication that those carbs are way too big. Carburetors need airflow in order to work. I had to increase the idle speed, which also in turn turns the distributor faster, which increases timing in order to stop the engine from pinging. And I think if the Venturis on the carburetors were smaller, we would have more airflow and we wouldn't have the problem of needing to increase the engine RPM to a higher than normal amount in order to start getting enough air to lift those pistons up and allow the fuel in. So I know these cars originally ran with H4s, but it's still my opinion that those carbs are too big for this engine, at least a particular engine that we have in this car right now. Let's get one of the needles pulled out of here and find out what needles are in these carbs right now. Looks like the needles we have this time are AJ. In a couple days, I'll be heading up to Road America for the World Healy Challenge. And then right from there, I will be going to the Austin Healy Conclave. So come by and say hi to me at either of those events if you're coming up to Wisconsin. If you want to see more videos like this, comment below and click subscribe.